Hello, Uranium friends. We are back with episode 20 of Uranium Talk, talking all things uranium. I am Jungle Funk from the Chart Guys, joined here by Chris Red Devil. Chris, how are you? I'm good, Joe. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Springtime's here, getting some warm weather, got leaves starting to pop out on the trees. Easter weekend. Easter weekend. Happy Easter, everybody. Let's talk about some uranium. So, as far as the technicals go, we're pretty much in the same spot as where we were last uh, episode, which was two weeks ago at this point. And, and really, the bottom line is that the burden of proof is on the bulls and bears are in control. And that is just pretty much that. So, we'll pop over through some charts real quickly here. We've got our URA spy ratio we talk about every week and bears are seeing follow through on the bear break of this monthly equilibrium. So we're now, we, we have technically broken this second level marginally um, and we'll just keep watching each level on the way down and see can bulls show back up. And for me personally, as long as this ratio chart is weak, then bulls backs are against the wall. So we've got a nice guide here with the two day 12 EMA resistance. And as long as that is acting as resistance, then bears are in control on this ratio chart, and that means bears are in control on the sector. So we remember last time we were hunting a monthly bounce here, it was this two-day 12 EMA that we were using as our guide. When bulls got up and over, that uh, signified the momentum shift. So I'll be watching for something similar there. And as far as our major miners go, we got some daily trend changes but bulls are now giving back a lot more of the move than they want to. So CCJ certainly remaining the strongest of our major miners. And if we pop out to the monthly here, we can see we still are in our monthly range here. So watching for the potential of a monthly higher low, but bulls are ultimately gonna need a weekly uptrend if they're to get that going. So key support down here is 2369. And if that were to be lost, while we'd still be in our monthly tightening range, it would be a red flag. So on the daily here, we have bulls buying up the dip on Thursday. And if they break this high of Thursday next week, then we would have a daily higher low, but bears have created enough room for a daily lower high. So that's what we gotta watch out for on any dip buys down here. And as far as our other major miners, UEC giving back a lot of the move, um, anything over 236 would be a daily higher low. Got daily 12 EMA resistance, unless bulls are up and over that. Nothing really changing here. NXE right back down on our key support here. So we know this uh, kind of level in the, the 340s is the key level. Got the daily trend change, no follow through right back down to support. Looking like a weekly bear flag, so yeah. So those those are always red flags. Even when you get those trend changes and it just pulls all the way back down to that base, it's it's a red flag. Yeah, it, it's a it's a red flag, and that just is what it is. There, the hope for NXE bulls is if we go back and look at this NXE URA ratio chart, and we look at the monthly, we know we're in our monthly EQ here, and this last monthly higher low that we had was formed off of bulls holding this support back here. So the number one thing that will change relative strength and weakness is a key hold of support or resistance. So bulls are obviously hoping that they can continue to play some defense at this key level. But if it breaks, that's notable. If that breaks, then we've got yearly consolidation underway on NXE with the loss of the low of last year. So, and a lot of names are looking at that same potential. UEC, if it breaks its range bearish, that'd be yearly consolidation. UUUU, same deal. And CCJ, same deal, but it's much higher above the low of 2022. But URA, URNM, everybody's looking at the potential of yearly consolidation if these ranges break bear. So, uh, can't really butter it up for bulls because they're still just not really proving anything. So if, if we look at URNM, same deal as the other miners, daily trend change, nice follow through initially, but now giving it all back. Uh, URA, same thing, daily trend change, giving it all back. UUUU, 
daily trend change, giving it all back. So biggest thing, URA SPY ratio needs to get over two day 12 EMA if, if we're talking about uh, confident bull entries. Until then, like uh, Chris is going to talk about here um, moving forward, there are low risk opportunities. And we talked about this last episode, which was this uh, weekend here of like, you know, bulls can be taking these low risk opportunities. And if you took that two weeks ago, you're well into a risk free position as long as you took some profit on this move. So low risk opportunities remain, but you've got to keep them low risk. You've got to be disciplined because now at this point, this is basically what bears wanted to see if they're looking to break out of these ranges, because you don't want to be breaking down when you're daily oversold already coming down testing it because then you're not going to see much follow through but to see the bounce cool off rsi levels now the potential is there that if nxe breaks these this 340 support there's potential for more follow through than there was uh three weeks ago so um that's pretty much all i've got well one more thing if the broad market sees some weekly consolidation which there's no signs of at the moment um, but uranium is certainly not positioned well for that at the moment. So if we go over to ES, uh, the S&P 500 futures, we're coming up into a key resistance. So it wouldn't be surprising to see some bear defense there, but we've got a clear daily uptrend as the guide. And we now have a new line in the sand at the low of 30, uh, low of Thursday, excuse me. So that's 4096.5. If that breaks, we'll have weekly consolidation underway in the broad market. And again, uranium not positioned well for that potential. So yeah, that, that, that's all I've got uh, pretty much today. Short and sweet, Chris. What, it's um, about time, Joe. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, the, the, the technicals are clear and when they're nice and clear, there, there's not as much to talk about because there, there really aren't too many different potentials for what we get here. Either bears maintain control as they have been in control for several months now, or bulls show up with the URA spy ratio getting over the two day 12 EMA. So one or the other, and it's not what, uh, you know, where's the bull bonanza? What the heck? No I thought you bull, promised the a bull, bull bonanza. The bull, bonan <laughs> the bull bonanza was in November of 2021. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so just on a fundamental side of things, uh, we have a new fund out there, uh, Uranium Spot Fund. Uh, spot uh, uranium fund and it's it's being billed as more of an, an uh, a vehicle for you know higher institutional investment money it's not going to be a publicly traded fund uh, we have to see how it plays out and how it affects spot price in general uh, they'll have immediate settlement there so unlike uh, u.un you know the sprot physical trust uh, this one, you know, someone, you know, they can trade through it. They can they can buy and sell as they wish, and the NAV is not going to be an issue over there. But, you know, just talking about what Joe was talking about with the uh, getting a daily high or low set, well, you know, you see, we saw, like, on U.UN, we have this trend change here, and then it actually broke and lost that trend change. But now it's set this low over here because it just took out that Wednesday action. So... You know, is this a is this a product of that new fund coming on? Uh, we don't know, uh, but th that's you know I've I've contended for a long time, especially in our you know in the chart guys uranium channel that one of the safer places to be right now is the uh, physical fund, and I still contend that that's the case because you know uranium spot price it, it hasn't moved. I mean, it's literally just bouncing around. At fifty bucks, yeah, so, it's riding that monthly twelve EMA still that we were it's talking just about riding a month it ago along, or so. And the actual spot price is doing, you know, it's sitting at fifty. So, you know, do we necessarily need uh, the spot price to run up? You know, there's a lot of experts out there that say, oh, we do or we don't. Regardless of that, it's always going to be better if the spot price starts to run up. It's going to at least change sentiment a bit maybe get some uh, people to buy in on the miners, but that's the deal there. So, you know, we're going to keep an eye on that new fund and see how it actually affects the physical uranium market. I mean, 
there could be some crazy swings involved there. We don't know. We, we just don't know what the influence on the market is going to be as far as that's concerned. So moving and on to these, real the, quick, Chris, before you move ahead. on, can you go back to U.UN and pop out to the monthly? Let's just highlight that while many miners are losing their monthly supports, U.UN is more in line with CCJ in the sense that it is still healthy at the highs. So yeah, it's... I mean, there's, there's no question U.UN and CCJ are the strongest names in the sector. One could probably argue that Kazadam Prom is as well. And then little ones like SILX is still doing great um, up there too, but obviously a bit of a different style name there. Yeah, uh, Silex is yeah different. So you know, because Adam Prom is is holding up fairly well uh, as well. So you know, it's good to keep an eye on the strongest names in the sector and see what they're doing. So yeah, you dot UN is go. It's doing fine. You know, this is just a visual here. Uh, and it's, you know, it's remaining in a fairly tight range. So we'll see how this plays out as time goes on. And we don't know if this uh, new fund is going to affect things here, but we will see, you know, we're going to see how that fund uh, plays out for us. So to the ETFs. So, you know, I'm going to be scouting some entries here and they, you know, I'm, I consider them to be low risk entries. Uh, Joe might have a different opinion on that, but, you know, we have a daily trend change here and we're still in a daily uptrend. Same with, uh, this is URA, this is URNM. Now, URNJ never confirmed a daily trend change, so it's going to be looking for that. So right now, the key level for URNJ is 1366. So, you know, it does this become the daily higher low to then you know, give us our possibility of a trend change? Maybe, because that, you know, that's what we're, we're gonna be looking for here. And then you need to get that follow through. We've gotten that, um, sorry. We've gotten that over here, right? So you've had your, your daily trend changes. Oh, this is so annoying. Uh, you've had your daily trend changes so now we're going to be looking to see if we get some follow through. So, but there's been a lot of room put up in here for um, a, a, the next move to be a daily lower high. So, you know, if if there's a, you know, I'm going to be bottom fishing over here when it gets down to this level, and I'm going to be considering it a fairly low risk entry. And I, since it's really truly a counter trend trade, I will be quick to be cutting at least half. So URNM is going to be probably my main target. And I'm going to be looking to play off these, these levels down here at the $28, $28 range. But if that, if that breaks, I'm going to be out, you know. And even if it doesn't, I'm still going to be, you know, if we look at the weekly here on URNM, you know, I'm going to be cutting half really quick. It's just not going to be a question on that. So uh, I'm going to be bottom fishing these levels. And I will be cutting half, especially into this 12 EMA level. So that's where I'm looking at. And it truly is uh, the the most likely scenario is a weekly lower high. So it's probably going to end up tightening up. And this could be going all through the summer for all we know, maybe a little bit further. You know, we have some, uh, again, some experts that are saying, oh, you know, we're going to get a big run in April. I don't subscribe to any of those theories. I'm just doing what the charts are telling me in front of me, but that's this is where I'm looking right now. And on um, just a quick note on CCJ, you know, I've always been saying for a long time in the room, uh, we have a fundamental floor at 22, and that's kind of where this Westinghouse deal occurred, right? 2176, and then we've got the technical floor at about 20 bucks. So. Those are the spots that I'm really keeping an eye on on CCJ. Now, again, there's bottom fish potential here. Like I'm looking, I have this marked here because this is a gap. And in my opinion, uh, you know, I'm going to be waiting for this gap to at least get tested before I even try to work off of this bottom again. Right. So, yeah, we've had a good buy up on Thursday. You know, we'll see how it plays out. So, I mean, those are the things that I'm looking at right now. Keeping an eye on this new fund to see if if it affects spot at all or the spot uranium miners or the spot price in general. 
And then I'm looking at these three ETFs. I am not at all looking at any of the smaller names. I'm I, I'm in position on some global atomic. I'm in some uh, position on uh, EU. Those are slightly underwater at the moment. I'm not adding. I'm not selling uh, until I see some more defined action here. So, and that's kind of where I stand with with the sector at the moment. Right on. You know, you you bring up a really important point of when you're when you're playing counter trend. There's no problem with taking the low risk opportunities, but um, the important part is what you said of like knowing that. Like on these bounces here, a, a, we have room for daily lower highs on on all of these uh, ETFs at this point. So if you're getting in here on these lows, and you, you're going to want to sell a portion to stay in control of the trade, because say you buy the break of the high of Thursday, and then you get a a, a dollar move up, even just a dollar move up, then your average is very quickly below the recent low if you if you take half if you get in here you sell half here then your average is there and then you're comfy and, and it goes from low risk to no risk and and that's a very different style play than if you're buying a daily higher low here you know it's healthy consolidation you can be looking for a move up but because we're the preceding move is retracing more than 50 percent of this move up we know there's room for a lower high, so that's where your your uh, retracement analysis works in with your trend analysis, and that tells you how to play it. How greedy can you be? How protective do you need to be? And in this current technical environment, uh, the setup is there to be protective if looking bullish on these things. I mean, we could technically say uh, you could decide. We could decide to use. A fib on this even you know you took the the hold on you took the low of this run that's not it for god's sake <laughs> i know i'm horrible with this stuff joe i think you're doing great man i think you're doing great okay yeah so here we go take two take two you get the low of this run you have your fib right here right yeah so it's already taken out this golden pocket, you know, so you have a 78% retracement, you know, you might look to, I might look to take a piece off around 30 bucks, you know, if, but I'm not in the spot where I'm looking to take a position yet. If the daily uh, gets over this high on Monday or Tuesday, then I know that this low is set, then maybe I'll be more inclined to just take a little scalp at it, but that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be scalping. I'll cut half really quick, and then I will uh, place my stop where I'm break even. And if that trade works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, and I'm not really losing any money. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it right now because it is a full-blown counter-trend trade. I mean, we have a lot of decimation going on in the sector, but as far as the other stuff is concerned, you know, I'm not even looking at these small guys at the moment. There's just no reason for me to be doing it. Um, that's just my philosophy on it. So that's kind of where we stand in the space at the moment, you know? That's yeah. kind of, and that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Pretty straightforward. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah, we'll just, uh, you know, when bulls show up, we'll certainly uh, be a little more open to, or a lot more open to, to to upside but right now bears are in control we just got to respect that so we're in a it. we're in a bear bonanza yeah the well, so and, well and just, we're not just in the bear bonanza yet if, if things wow. like if we get this yearly consolidation on all of these names then perhaps that is the bear bonanza you know we'll be looking for yearly higher lows but yep. you know that could put us into 2024 2025 who knows we'll just yep. go one step at a time and and we are here because we want the bull bonanza, but we're not going to tell you that like this is the dip by opportunity of a lifetime. It could be, but it also could everything could drop 40 percent more. We don't know. We don't have we've been trying to order some magic crystal balls, but uh, they're on back order. So I yeah, guess we'll just use T.A. Become, until it's, then. It's a supply chain issue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a supply chain uh, issue with the magic crystal ball. <laughs> hey, just and just as another thing and. and 
you know, we've we've talked about it in multiple sectors, but this this run up, it's just low volume. You know, when you have low volume, uh, I mean, I expect I expect consolidation when I have such a low volume run up. We know that things are going to change in this sector. If you follow this sector long enough, you just all of a sudden you see this rush of of money. It's a fun flow story. There's a huge rush of money. You get these giant uh, green bars. And then you start to see continuation. This is not, this doesn't have that. This is not that, yeah. It just doesn't have that. I mean, URNJ still needs to even at least attempt to uh, confirm a daily trend change. It might be starting to do that here uh, if this is the low and it gets maintained and we get follow through above this high, but there's a lot of work to do. Yeah, I mean, that's the less likely scenario because of the pullback. So yeah, we, w- the, we would need increasing bull volume if that were to play out. So so that's where we stand. Happy Easter. Uh, wish we had better news, but we don't. Maybe next time. Maybe All right. next time. We'll see. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we will see you next episode. Adios. Over and out. Over and out.